gaming. They did well at Worlds, but unfortunately it was only on the analysis desk because they obviously didn't make it there against Fnatic, who themselves got third place and a big fat check to go with it. Couldn't quite make it that extra step though. And also kind of showed up by Royal Club what their weakness was. All I can say is for this match, Demon, it's just in my head, it's just this meme I keep saying. It's like, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. I mean, the it, last this one is was gonna be, incredible. This is going to be, I mean, this is like a build up so much of, of uh, Double If constantly saying he's better than Reckless. And mm. Reckless saying, you know, I'm not really sure about that. I'm pretty sure I can take you. And it's finally coming into this moment where these two teams will go head to head, these two players in that lane together. And, you know, well, I'm honestly not sure who I favor the most. Well, the last time they, they went to head-to-head -to -head was at IPL5. Right. It was Reckless that came out on top. They won 2-1, although everybody was claiming it wasn't just Reckless. I'm worried about Fnatic. What, what, what's going on with Peke there? Is it, what, the is trophy it, blinded him. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we saw him sneaking on stream earlier with that trophy, but uh, there is the young man, Reckless. Now 17, legal to play in the LCS. He was actually legal to play after the group stage at Worlds, but instead, Fnatic chose to stick with Pushu, and what, rightly so, I think, because Pushu played incredible at Worlds. Mm -hmm. But now, the Phenom, I think is safe to call him, has come in. We'll see exactly how he's performed. He was playing with Copenhagen Wolves throughout the summer. Uh, he was keeping practice, summer. importantly. Kept practice, kept in the competition, kept in the tournaments. He was in the house as well with Pushu. So, you know, the, these guys are, have all gelled together. They're all set, set up now in the house here in, nearby in Cologne, so they are very much prepared. Of course, they're up against Counter Logic Gaming, the daddies, the granddaddies, I guess you could say. But it's a new Counter Logic Gaming. You know, there's no one in that lineup that was there back in 2010 when they won the World Cyber Games. It is a very new lineup. But Double Lift and Aframu, Link yesterday, right there on your screen, he played fantastically well and actually out-farmed and out-killed Link. Uh, double lift for quite most of the games. Oh, there you go. And, you know, to me, Afro lift is the best bot lane combo in North America. Rush like, hour. <laughs> rush hour. Yeah, rush hour. That's what they that. call themselves, at least. Like, it is ridiculous how good Afro move is. I'm going to say it time and time again, because his... He, he was previously an AD carry, which you keep that in mind. He knew how to play the lane. He knew how to be aggressive, when to be aggressive, etc. He's now playing support, and you've seen, I guarantee you've seen the videos. And they both, they both actually switch roles, because Doublelift used to be support as well. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, I mean, like, they both, they're both synonymous with the same roles. And I'm just, I, honestly, I think they are easily the best combo in North America. In the world, I'm not sure, because it comes down to how much they, or how much they practice. And, you know, CLG yesterday, it wasn't the Doublelift show. It was, I mean, yeah, he got a lot of kills. It was really impressive, but it wasn't, let's feed everything to Doublelift. Let's have him carry everyone. Let's protect him. Everyone on the team, just like you said, Link. Everyone playing well, even Trix coming in doing a fantastic mm. job. And I want to see, can they come up to the pressure though? They have a huge match here, probably one of the biggest in this year for them. And it's going to be such a tough one. Like, I, who, who do you favor? Because we, we heard Joe, we heard Crepo, they favor Fnatic. There's no question about it. Fnatic are the strong, strong favorites. This is CLG that didn't make it to Worlds versus Fnatic that got third place and if they would have turned up on the day, could easily have been in that mm. World Finals at the Staples Center. But it wasn't the case. Some players, actually felt the pressure, and Peke being one of them. They, they, I know I was there on the day in the Galen with the semifinals. These guys were really nervous. It's the first time I've seen Fnatic really feeling the pressure. But right now we're into picks and bans, and I was just about to say, we talked about tricks. Yesterday he played at least twice, and now it's being banned out. Yeah, he went 6-1-10 and 10 in this games yesterday with that, and you obviously want to take it away. You want people out of their comfort zone. But, exactly, yeah. You know, I, I keep thinking, though, nowadays, it's impossible to take someone completely out of their comfort zone because there's so many champions to pick from and there's only a limited number of bands. So people are going to be comfortable on these other champions, but, you know, get them out of Elise. Make them play something else and kind of favor yourself a little bit more. Nearly left open. Peke is going to take that one quite easily. It can be so as, though. That's the thing. This, is, this, this was one of the issues with Fnatic. Every time we did research on him, it's like, who do you pick ban against them? Actually, it's very tricky because a lot of them have a large champion pool. So as effectively could play anything in that top lane. Cyanide in the jungle has got a really large yeah. setup. They're actually in the wrong order on the uh, uh, pick bands, but we won't worry about that. I'm sure they can deal with it when we're getting game. Peke as well. He's got a massive variety of champions, and we can see the fact that Cassidy and Lissandra was taken away from him. They don't want to use that burst on him, but again, it leaves exposed. I mean, Zed we've seen actually well, not have that good a performance. Kha'Zix in there. There's so many champions he's so good at. There's also one thing that you're missing. We saw Yellowstar play Shen top lane once, mm, and so has playing support course, yes. as Blitzcrank in the summer split. So there's even more possibilities for them if they want to go for it. But the whole Cassidy and the Sandra combo, 
I love seeing Soaz and Xpeke on that. They were just like a two-man squad. It was, as, as a quick shot coined, it was like the trilogy uh, of Kevin, because they just constantly roamed around together and picked him off in uh, one or two of their games. Their combo together and assassination potential were so high. I want to know if they're going to go for something similar like that, but seeing it in Italy off the bat kind of makes me think they're not going to be going for anything like that. Well, it's a clever pickup from Trix as well, going on the Vi, because that's a champion that Cyanide was very strong on. Shivana being left open has got through. That's potentially going to be so as could be the jungler's course. Reckless, I'm interested to see what he's going to be playing, because previously, Tristana was the champion yep. he was ha hitting hard. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really curious too. I think he was going to go Tristana. That's that's what I thought yesterday, mm. because just to show double lift up, after he started playing it in, you know, in SummerSplit of LCS and saying, you know, I really enjoy this champion, but... I think even a Vayne would be more would be more interesting if you went for that. Just for the sake of it, just to show double if my mechanics are better than yours, but I think they're gonna play more for the team than more for the, the rivalry yeah. that these two teams have right now. The Vi, I mean, we've seen how strong she is. We just saw uh, Diamond play in her three out of four games so far. Such a strong champion. Saw her at Worlds doing very well. The early game presence of her is amazing. I and mean, when you hit level six, your ganks become even stronger right now. But the Shivana, I don't know where that's gonna go. As you're saying, Soaz can play anything top lane. Sonnet has a really depth, uh, really huge pool of champions he can play from. I'm not 100% sure. It's the same sold. with this Vlad. Is this going to be Nien? Is it, or is it going to be Link? Is Link going to be sticking on this one? There's the support being picked in there. We don't know which way this one could go as well because it's another utility champion. The team's not really giving too much away to one another right now. I mean, obviously, the Zyra is going to be the support. I say obviously. We did see Kowtide yesterday playing it in the mid as well. So there's a number of opportunities for them to take. I would. Which way will it go? Could be Varus. So actually, I talked to Doublelift, and mm -hmm. for him, Jinx is the way forward. Jinx is by far the strongest AD carry. I was having a chat with him about it and say, like, what do you see in it? It's like, there is nothing bad against Jinx. Can absolutely push wow. and decimate everything in lane. That is a really bold thing to say. And Reckless, he's got he's to show it up here. I mean, you, to me, AD carry matchups now are mostly just about who can outplay the other? Which jungler is more interactive in that lane? It's not really about uh, about skill or about the champion in particular. It is about the skill, but not about the champion particularly. Um, the Vladimir, that will be on Link, Whoa, I'm pretty sure. Okay. He's been practicing that Here quite a bit. Here we go. This is going to be Soaz on Karma in the top lane, Support I'm pretty sure. Nidalee? No, no, Nidalee, Nidalee you in the... Uh, uh, there's Zyra and Ash, so it's the standard yeah. combo. So, which is interesting because we've not seen Ash all weekend. Soaz will be pulling out that Karma in the top lane. That's going to be a Shivana in jungle, unless... Suddenly, Cyanide took and took upon the guise of Diamond is going to play Karma in jungle, but I don't think that's going to happen. But Karma being pulled out. There's a number of champions being pulled out that we haven't even seen this weekend. The mobility of Fnatic's team is ridiculous. Nidalee is really hard to catch. You can obviously leap away. But as we heard Krepo talking time and time again yesterday, Shivana is so fast, it can catch anyone. If you pair in Karma with that, who can speed him up even more, mm. how are you ever going to escape that? And with a Jinx... Nidalee as well, you can't catch that. Yeah, it's going to be really tough. Also gives uh, Ash an escape mechanism. But then Zyra, I mean, this crowd control you have is that support can really keep anyone away from you. And right now, the only person that can dive into that back line is Trix. Oh, we'll see whether he's going to be going solo or whether he's going to have someone with him. It could be a Riven. Wow. So these actually could go in either lane. Riven we've seen mid, obviously, in previous match. Uh, we just saw High play in it. Whether he's going to go top lane for Nien, Nien. I want actually to say, played both in the past. I want to say Riven will be going top lane because Link's been actually practicing quite a bit. I checked up on his recent games. That was one of his champions or main ones he was working with. And also with the Ghost Flash, you're kind of going to assume that as well. But really interesting lines from both teams, I have to say. There's a relatively squishy side of CLG, but they still do have Vitamir to pull away, so it won't matter too much. But I really want to know how this game is going to go. I, I think it comes down to this level one action we might see. Well, this, this is very different from the, the CLG we saw yesterday. It was very much the standard protect the double lift. A lot of that big beefy tank champion with the end playing Nasus mm -hmm. yesterday. That big beef up front and all the shields, of course, to protect double lift. It's very different this time around. Did they realize they just can't do that against Fnatic? Because Fnatic have got a lot of champions that are going to be die gunning for him. Well, even Fnatic, I mean, they're really well known for the split pushing. Xpeke back door, and that's what he's his pride and joy. But they don't have a comp for that, really. They have more of a, we want a team fight you. If anything, Sinai is going to be the one split pushing. We want to poke you down with the Zyra Ash range and then pairing the Nidalee with that. And not to mention the healing that they can do with the Nidalee and Karma being able to keep himself alive on top of that. So it's going to be a really interesting game here. And I want to know which team is really going to come out big. I think the real question is, are we going to see the AD carry supports go head to head? And if that happens, I think everyone's eyes are going to be on that. I think they might. I, I think they might. But then again, I mean... Uh... Who's, who's the better 2v1, a Riven or a Karma? I'd say, in terms of CSing, it'd be Riven. 
just because you can obviously have you have a lot more abilities mm -hmm. to do it with, and you can outlast hit obviously with your passive mixed in. But Karma will have a lot more sustain, your range, so you won't be harassed on your turret as well. But then again, you know, Reckless and Yellowstar, they can do so much to you if you are that Riven on your own turret. Well, we will see, ladies and gentlemen. We are live right now. It is Fnatic versus CLG, and wow, what a clash this could be. We've already seen Gambit decimating Cloud9. Was not expecting that one myself, because I'd called Cloud9, and lost myself some friends in Gambit doing that. But it Never is Europe versus Gambit. North America once again. Yeah, you don't bet against Gambit, especially when they're against an American team, because, the, well, the number one seeded American team has been smashed, decimated, by the Russians. Can Fnatic, the Europeans, do the same to CLG, the last remaining American hope? They were both voted in here by you guys, the fans, the public at home, who you wanted to face here. CLG beating out the likes of TSM, etc., as well, to get here. Oh, Peke. Peke, very, very close. Level one wise, what do we see from these two? Uh, he's going to get the hook, and that's going to be Peke. Surely he's also to drop the ignite being used. Her jumps away from it, but Flash is used, and that will be First Blood America. And I think that's a smart play overall. I mean, obviously, CLG got the kill, but it's Peke flashing away. No one was going to die. It made Aphromu, it made, uh, I believe it was Niantanso uh, to actually flash in as well. So they committed two flashes for that, but they still get the First Blood, and importantly, it goes over towards that top lane. So that's going to be very dangerous now for whoever's going to be in the lane against him. So, Fnatic realizing the situation. Of course, it's going to make the camera guy a little bit tricky. Yellowstar going very deep to pull out Ward in there. They know that it's there. Is Aphromo going to throw, go and throw a pink there? No, because he hasn't got one on him. That's good. That would be tricky. So they'd explorer. rather just probably start off there then. Mm -hmm. And we do see Nian returning to lane with the red pot. He is looking for a kill. He's looking for blood on whoever he's up against, and it looks like it will be so ass. So it's going to be really cool to see if he can pull that off. And if he can, he can really snowball his lane very hard. It's going to be hard to pin down a Karma, though, because she's versatile. Can land that leash, slow you down, speed herself up, everything. So he's just going to keep it at a long, long range, I feel. Same with Peke. We've seen some pretty impressive nidlies so far already, and we know just how much damage those spears can do if they land at full range. This is the bottom lane. This is the one we want to focus on, Jason. Yeah, it looks like we do see them trying to push lane quickly, trying to get the uh, level 2 advantage on. Right now, none of them getting it just yet. Three more minions for uh, CLG side. They will hit that level 2, and they will be able to push Fnatic out, but they got to start pushing it back. And Cyanide, he's going for an invader. He's going to catch Trix, and he has the red buff, so he has the extra damage. We'll see whether he goes in. Trix realizes he's there, and Trick's in trouble. He's going to have to get away from this one. Cyanide's going to continue harassing him, pushing him right out of that jungle. We'll go for the red. Meanwhile, Yellowstar down the bottom. The flash comes in. Has double lift gone too deep here? Reckless is going to turn around. He does manage to get the kill. That's a great flame. He gets the double kill. Reckless strikes back. Oh, you see on the camera, he did a little handshake like, yes, that was so worth it. They get the double. Great job making them overcommit. And Yellowstar baiting them in perfectly. Now, Cyanide stealing away the red buff from Trix. Fnatic have gotten a huge early lead in this game. Wow. That volley. That volley right there was a blow for America. That's for sure. So has pushing the lane out, actually, against Nien. Wasn't expecting that when you can see Nien being forced backwards and actually out farming Nien so far. Of course, he has got that red pot, so we'll wait for this opportunity to start going all in on Soaz. If he gets it's, caught out of lane, he's in desperate trouble. It's, it's very smart of him to do that, though, because they realize Trix won't have red buff, so he can't really be slowed and caught. He, if he hit, if he levels a little bit earlier, he'll have all of his abilities, so he'll have the chain, he'll have the extra slows, and uh, even a shield for himself, so he'll go to survive better by pushing the lane now and letting it push back out to middle uh, uh, of it than he would have just waiting. Interesting. Pickaxe coming straight out from Reckless there. He we'll see how that, that lane. works out for him. Still, yeah, I mean, the fact that he went back and spent straight away, went back and got that gold, that's worth 14 to 12 in terms of CS. I mean, that was such an early buy to pick up that pickaxe. Oh, it really is. I mean, he lost a little bit of CS, but the lane's pushing back into his favor, so it doesn't matter in the end. And right now, CLG, I mean, if you're running an aggressive lane, you have to be careful if you do lose out early, because then that means you can't do it yet again. And in fact, they realize it's pushing, just going to wait it out here. And I want to see, are we going to have any more battles develop? Because the junglers haven't been down here just yet, as we do see Trix finally heading that way. It's just been about pure aggression out of both these sides. Double Dawn's ring being picked up by Soaz. He's just been back to buy. The wave was kept pretty even between the two. Pink Ward being picked up by Nien as well as he's backed, as well as that Doran's blade now. So he's certainly waiting, biding his time with that red pot. We'll see whether that investment pays off just yet. But so far, he's been pretty safe. 
battle between the bottom lane is going to continue and the middle actually is very even it was uh, square on CS a moment ago but obviously oh. we've just seen one backing off there Trix once again getting invaded by Cyanide I'm wondering whether he's going to battle him over this rate you bet your life he is and he is doing such a great job of keeping Trix in the jungle he does get the smite does get the steal and he's trying to just control where the ganks are coming by constantly being in the jungle CLG because he's Shravana because he's so fast that he has the ability to take it very quickly and to check where Trix is or has been. We'll, we'll see Trix at the moment being slightly bullied by the very experienced Cyanide. He's been involved in Season 1, 2 and 3 of the World Championships. Actually, I tell a lie, he wasn't at Season 2. He was obviously in the qualifying process but got knocked out in the European Regionals. In the end though, shoved against that tower. He's going to get that farm back going but so has on Karma. We saw Karma a number of times back in Season 3. Wasn't convinced. Wasn't convinced back then, no. Yeah. We even saw it in the jungle from Diamond Prox, and we actually had a few showings at the Worlds as well, but really only by, I think it was Mineski that pulled it out, and that's not really something we can power on. This is what we were talking about, though. If Nien can get on top of Soaz, it could mean trouble, but Soaz turns it back around, puts that leash down, and just an equal trade. And Nien, he still has that red pot. He needs to go for a kill soon if he wants to make it effective. Otherwise, he just wasted all that 350 gold. So right now, he needs a kill potentially, even put the pink ward down like you mentioned earlier, and yet it didn't spot the ward that Soaz used. So either way, he's still going to spot someone coming. And right now, Sunite's still just sticking in the jungle. Hasn't made his presence known, obviously because he's... He's Shivani, he can't really gank that easily on a lane that doesn't have an insane amount of CC. So he's just making sure Trix doesn't hit level 6 before him. And that, this is an issue though, because Trix has been looking to try and make those ganks. He went down the bottom, but they knew he was there. They'd already backed away, and Cyanide once again is back in CLG's jungle and taking away their farm. He's already gone in, taking away the wraiths for the second time running. Gonna take away the entire top area of the jungle. It's, Trix is hurting here. It's such a slippery slope because when you're the jungler and you start to get counter jungled, you have to invest your own money into wards, which you see him have right now, to make sure he can cover his entrances, cover his buffs. And when you are forced into wards, obviously you can't buy the other items you need. So it's really starting to hurt out a bit for him. CLG needs to make sure to ward a little bit better just to help him out if he wants to be able to get back in this. And right now, Sina coming to this top and doesn't have red buff, but Gonna scare Nian away, and that's finally the first gank we've seen. Just gonna run on by, it's like, yeah, you know, you're there. Well, that's the ultimate being used there. Now, Hemo Plague won't have enough to take down Peke, he just heals himself up. That's also the danger of a Nidalee, he can just heal himself up. Not only the spears are the strong point, the heals. Once he gets that ability power built up, they can be such oh. huge heals. They see but Trix CLG on the red buff invade. They see him coming, looks like all four members, no, looks like Ruckus will stay farming away. They just wanna at least be able to spot this, maybe clear it back up. Trix doing a great job of doing some counter it himself. Does pick it up, Sonic coming up the side. But they should be able to skate. Oh, the Ash Arrow! Straight into the arrow that goes on towards Aphromoo. Aphromoo does have flash available. And this Trix zones in on towards Beke. Beke pretty low. That's a good hook onto Cyanide. But Doublelift's going to get focused on the back. Doublelift weaves in the barrier. Can he get away from this one? Cyanide's going to jump on towards him. Has he got enough damage to get him onto the tower? I'm not too sure. One more hit should do it. Yes, he does. Doublelift goes down, but looks but looking back in the jungle. They're chasing on towards Trix. Trix forced to flash in towards the pit. And you can see Beke continuing to chase despite the fact he's very low on health and mana. They may turn this back around on towards him. Will he land the hook? Yes, he will. Peke's in trouble. He's going to go down. He went too deep. And COG get revenge again. And a good play by both teams. Great job by Fnatic to make their presence known to stop that red buff from taking away, even though it was uh, eventually in the hands of Trix. But luckily for COG, they do pick up a kill. But Sana, in the meantime, he goes for the red buff again. He's going to deny another buffer away from Trix, even though he did lose his own. Yeah, in the end, we, while that was all happening, the battle at the top lane just continued farming process. Nien was farming between the lanes, but Cyanide steals away the red buff. Nien will be back in off here. They know that he's there. Actually going to try and track him down, but he's already going to be gone before Cyanide gets around there. Peke on Nidalee, 0 2 zero. Yeah, and in his lane, he's just, I'm assuming, looking to farm because he's not really going to be able to 1v1 link too easily. Once you're a Vladimir, you get some sort of a spell event, which he currently does have with that revolver. It's very hard to kill him, so he's pretty much just trying to keep his farm up, trying to keep his money coming. But one thing I noticed, look what Doublelift has. He, bit, he picked up a Crystalline Flask. Yeah, Crystalline Flask along with that BF Sword. BF Sword as well for Reckless, but he wants to just chung on through this pot. He's actually been focused and gone down twice already, though. Yeah, and he wants to be able to make sure to trade a little bit better with Reckless and to be able to harass quite a bit more with that extra mana he gets from it. So he's trying to get control of his lane a little bit again, but he is keeping up in CS, so he's doing a fantastic job of that. But one thing he will lag as the game progresses into team fight mode, he doesn't have a global initiate like Reckless has. One thing is for certain with Doublelift, he'll always keep up in CS, even if he's up against Wei Zhao or uh, I guess Uzi is the uh, recent phenom coming out of China, despite the fact he's moved into the jungle role for Royal nowadays. God only knows why they made that decision, but Fnatic at the moment, 
seemingly in a slightly better position. I'm not too sure because Peke is, you know, he's 0 2, but one of them was first blood, but both of them have actually been hooks from Afromu. Yeah. Which it on an Italy is something you don't often get. Well, yeah, look, I mean, luckily for X Peke, I didn't be able to actually see Afromu coming in that last one, but once we get into the late game, because I want to focus on that as we approach it, how is CLG going to engage on Fnatic? Because you have the slows out of Ash, you have the roots and the uh, string of thorns out of uh, Yellow Star. How are you going to approach them? They can just kite you, ship as much as possible, and engage when they want. But right now, Sinai and the bottom lane looking for a gank here as the Intanto goes in on Soas. Yeah, late game, there is a lot of kite. They're actually catching on double lift once again. He's going to go down. It's Sinai that gets himself another kill. He was phenomenal in the world final, Sinai. It certainly carried his team against Royal Club in a number of those games. But this time, once again, he's continuing on, and they are pushing that bottom turret. And you see where their focus is. What lanes has, has Sinai really ganked? Top ones, but it was just a, a, a swipe by. And bottom, he's trying to focus on double up. He got the kill on him a little bit earlier. Rick, Trix coming in. Trix goes way what? too deep. What were you thinking? He literally dived into that Stranglethorns. They set him up for it. And that's just gifting another kill to Sinai. That had to have been a mistake. I mean, he just died for pretty much no reason. They got nothing out of that. Maybe he got one CS or something like that. But now they're going to lose a turret, as they do have expect every turn in middle. So he's going to be able to hold on to his. And overall, this game has been really focused around the bottom side of this map, which we honestly kind of expected. Yeah, we kind of realized it. I think Fnatic may well have set this one up, but Soaz is going to get dived on beyond me in the end. He's going to get a good trade once again, but there is a tower there. Soaz is well aware of that. He's going to turn it back around all towards the end. He's got a group of minions also hitting him. The Ignite goes down. There goes the slow. Puts the shield on himself. Feels he can go deep enough. In the end, though, with that red pot, is it going to be enough? I don't think it will. Soaz gets the kill. Oh, that was so well played. Soaz, knowing his limits, just so damn good in that top lane. Remember, he was crowned the best top laner at the All-Stars winning out against everyone he went up against and just proving it right there went for a triple Doran's ring because he wanted to have that help to survive the extra regen to harass and Anton so if he's if he's falling behind if double is falling behind this is not a good sign for CLG fans out there yeah, if anyone knows how a trade's gonna go it generally is so as if you anyone watch that 1v1 that happened on shy and all stars on shy of all people he uh, really took it to the limit I think it's safe to say reckless though back in his bottom lane look at him now infinity edge is well under the complete that's gonna be the high hemo play coming off but again just heals it off continues to put the traps down, didn't manage to land it on towards Link. Didn't land that spear either. Link's doing a very good job at dodging those spears actually so far. Yeah, I mean, as long as he stays in the minion wave, which wants to be anyways for his E um, to be able to hit more targets, it, he's not going to really be pushed out. You got to have some jungle interaction, but even with a Shivana, it shouldn't really be enough here. But expect it, he's not being hindered. He's been able to get his blue. And when you're in AP Nidalee and you're trying to poke really well, ooh, that was close. That's exactly what you want to see, though. He's able to get his blue. And this is a scary combo because you can land that slow and the spear just follows it up. I mean, it's it, it la narrows down that angle so much more. Oh, and you can see the spear's coming through, lands onto Link. He realizes he's got to back up. Lifesteal's not going to help him there. That could well be the turret. But look at Aphromoo. He's walking into a trap. Cyanide's ready and waiting. Double if comes up there, tries to throw the chompers out, but Aphromoo has singled himself out. While this is happening, Trix tries to come in. Oh, the spear catching on towards him. The Ash Arrow comes in, the volley from Reckless goes him down. Now they're on to double lift. They want to focus him, they want to ruin that KDA. Soaz throws out more damage, he has to back away. Where did Trix end up going? I do not know. That's the middle turret. They could all turn and go for the inner. They could, but we just have Sada chasing out Afromu. Afromu is not, I was about to say, where did he get to? Cyanide's chasing him, there's a big scary dragon on your backside. He's gonna have that flay back up, he should be safe enough with that one. He may well give him enough time to back away, but look at the middle turret, that's where the focus is. Yeah, he stalled long enough for them to get to this middle turret. It's gonna go down here, they might be able to pick him inhibitor turn off this, because Neantanso's still top lane and Link taking a lot of damage. The poke. It's, it's, it's a new form of poke. It's, <laughs> I mean, a Nidalee a, and a, a, a Karma. I've never seen that poke going on with it, along with the Ash. That's three long range, nasty poke. And it's really hard to deal with because they don't really have anyone that can sustain from it except Link. They don't have any kind of healer that obviously Fnatic does have. But off, off of that, off of those two turrets, off of those two kills they got, they're taking a dragon on top of that. Look at the gold lead that they're able to get. 14 minutes in. You know, Jason, I feel I've been lied to because we've spoken to people about Fnatic over the last few days and said they've only really been practicing for like two, three days. They're in terrible shape right now. Everybody is beating them. Good God, what the hell's happened? They just show nothing clearly because it's a 3-0-3 reckless, 7-3 up in kills. Double lift at 0-3-2. You just don't see these scores. It's a 5k advantage already, 3-1 to in turrets, and one of those inner turrets being the middle already down. 14 minutes gone. They prepared really well for this game, I'll say that. 
they, they might have been practicing a lot, not been playing well, but they prepared the hell for this game. They banned out Elise, which is a really good champion to use for a hard engage, and they they wanted to run a poke comp, so they set up for that. Extremely well played just for the picks and bans alone, and they're playing it flawlessly. They're not falling behind, which would keep them uh, probably on the back end of this game very easily, and they're still controlling the game very well. Look at the wards that you have down for Fnatic in the jungle CLG. Well, that spear would, would have almost landed flat out onto us from him. They maybe think no one's there because that spear didn't land. They're going to have to back away from this one. Reckless is going to be the target. Fires off that arrow. He's going to get honed in with an assault and battery. Reckless will be the focus. He should go down here. Finally, can they turn it around? Afrimu will go down. Peke is going to go down as well. This is going to be two kills for CLG. He does manage to heal himself up. Continues running, but it's a fearless task. He's not going to be able to get away from this one. Or will Surely he? Surely to God. Double lift should close the gap. No, throws out himself another heal, gets the spear off, pops and pounces away again. Peke continues to run. He's going to have another heal back up in a cooldown in a moment. Ne uh, sorry, Link is going to close him off. Where's he going to go? Is he going to buy himself enough time? That 10 second gap, he can pounce straight across. The map. He's kiting Link across now. There's going to be the Hemo Plague. That's going to be enough. The tower hit should be in. He no. gets another heal off. Hemo Plague comes off. Nien comes across. Oh. He can throw a spear back again. Now he's got Soaz coming to help him out here. Soaz has joined him. He puts the shield on him as he goes past the tower, gets the heal off, and he lives. Wow. I do not believe Peke's great escape. And we talked about mobility. You just saw it right wow. there. Able to escape three men. And they're going to take the tower. Wow. <laughs> I do not believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, get a YouTube clip ready for that one because that is a great escape from Peke. Phenomenal play out of him. But right now, Link coming up the side. He committed his ultimate just in that last fight alone, and he's going in. Whoa, Link, you've gone too deep. Has to pull away from that one. So has also coming back on towards them. They got to respect the poke that can come out from Fnatic here. And it's funny because CLG used to be known for poke compositions back when they had Hotshot GG, but right now that turret's falling very quickly. The poke coming in. The Antonso knocked down very low, and they're forced to back away. In the meantime, Reckless's middle still pushing. That's going to be the another inner turret down. Like you say, Reckless, he's on that middle turret. Double lifts down the bottom. He's like, guys, I can get these out of turret. Doesn't matter. They're on your bloody inhib turrets. Get back and defend. Wow, David, I would love to have you as a coach. I really <laughs> would. But in the meantime, he does at least pick up one turret. They are able to defend away Fnatic from losing any inhibitor turrets, but they're getting damage on the top lane right now, and they still have their poke comp up here. They're continuing to drive on through the inhibitor turret. Double lift is still down the bottom. Reckless is actually heading down to deal with him. They feel in a four on four fight. Fnatic have a massive, massive advantage. The poke from Soaz and Peke is huge. Reckless gets a shot on towards double lift, gets a vision of him. The Hawk shot's there. They're saying he's finally backing off, guys. We can leave the inhibitor alone now. It's actually down to about half health here and didn't even get a blow on towards the inner. And they're backing away with quite a bit of gold to spend too. I mean, look at Soaz's build right now. Still with those triple Doran's blade, going for that Robin's death cap. You even see uh, Sana picking up a little bit of armor here, but the Infinity Edge is done for Reckless. He hurts so bad against the Bloodthirster that Double Lift has. And right now, it looks like they want to go for a push bottom here. Wow. Okay, things are slowing down. Whew. Let's just let's like take a moment, Jason. Seconds. Let's take a moment. Just check out what is going on across the map. Let's have a look at some of these builds. All right, well, as you do see, Karma, so as going for the AP, going for the heavy shielding, uh, which will really provide a great ability for them to kite backwards and to take the damage that they, uh, CLG has. But Link kind of getting caught here. Should be able to escape, though. We see over on next Peke going for the regen with the Athenes and Holy Grail, going for the cooldown reduction on top of that. And over on the other side, Who's I mean... That? We have this. Oh no. He, oh, he manages to get good flash. So as comes around the backside. Cyanide and Peke are in there as well. They're going to get on towards Link. That's going to be Link going down. It's Reckless that picks up another kill. And this is all stemming from the great control that Fnatic got early on. Look at all the wards yet again in the jungle for CLG. You see two pink wards invested towards the top side because CLG expected them to work towards top a little bit more. But no, they changed up. They went bottom. They got another turret. Nian's still top lane, who's finally backing away. And they're going to look at this inhibitor turret. And you know, looking at this game. Fnatic were the team that adapted the best to the playstyles of Worlds. The fast pace, towers going down, everything being blitzed. Look at this, we're 19 minutes into this game and they're on the inhibitor turrets and that turret is going down. They're very fast and there's the arrow. That is going to be another inhibitor. They're going to catch on towards it. Trix is going to have to get away from this one. Stranglethorns did not land on anyone, but they will get the inhibitor down from this one. And Fnatic can just roll on round and go for the middle turrets. And they're going to back away from this one with that advantage. But where are they going to go? Are they going to go to the middle lane and go for that? Are they going to back away, take away the blue buff, go back to base, heal up right before Dragon, which they obviously can do. But right now, Fnatic, the control they have over this game is ridiculous. Ridiculous is definitely the word. That's going to be the blue buff going away. Oh, I tell you what, Link's gone looking a bit of it too early. That pool is not going to get you away. And Peke is going to pick up the kill.
And this is all still stemming from this vision control. We see Aphromoo just picked up an Oracle. He realizes we need to clear this vision out. We need to gain control of something. We have that bottom inhibitor down, which I'm assuming Double Lift will keep farming up for the next three to four minutes. As Nian trying to take this turret down, get him a little bit of extra gold here. And it looks like he should be able to pick this one up. Well, CLG, I think I've realized they've got a bit of a mountain to climb coming into this matchup. They weren't sure exactly what Fnatic was going to turn up. And I think, I think now we can see exactly which one it is. They have pulled another combo out of the bag. Remember, and this is Fnatic. Fnatic, all we used to see was a split push. Soaz and Peke combo going up the sides, pulling everybody away, and then suddenly taking one of the turrets. Slowly but surely doing the exact same thing every time. They've found another combo that works so well, and it's the poke comp. That's a scary arsenal for Fnatic to pull out yet another tactic. Yeah, people always forget how strong that composition can really be. As long as you're really coordinated and really synchronized at escaping, no team can really touch you unless they keep you behind early on. But right now, Nian overextended yet again, gonna be backing away, double it, pushing up that bottom lane as far as possible, but it doesn't matter. They're gonna get this turret before he gets back. Yeah, like Nian and Double have just are gone again, and then they, they spot this out so quick. The tactical movement is phenomenal from Fnatic. That's another inhibitor going down. Remember the top one? It's already down to half. Trix goes in, assault and battery, but really, who you're gonna get? This See the Plimo play coming out, but it's not going to be enough. The volley comes out. Link's forced to back away. Sinai taking low. Mega Darth Rocker completely missing as well. And they can Link have to back away. That's another hit and hit gone. Fnatic back off. And they're changing their poke up around a little bit. When they want to chase, they just speed up Reckless. He gets the slows and everyone else follows up. And CLG committed everything they possibly had to kill next Peke, but they couldn't do it. The shield from Soaz was too much. They're going to get another inhibitor turn off of this. But can CLG fight this time? Throwing the plants out to tank it down. And you see Soaz taking some damage. Stranglethorns gets thrown out. It bounces out from all. That's a juicy target. Peke Spear finds the mark. And they're going to continue to get this one down. It's going to finally fall here, but right now it's a slippery slope. Uh, Fnatic just keep pushing. They keep getting a kill here or there. They keep getting more inhibitors, and after this, they surely are going to back away. Double lift is getting poked on down here. You can see Soaz around the side. That no, that Spear lands on towards Link. That's going to be the third and final inhibitor down. Double super minions all spawning towards CLG. And now with all of this down, they have so many opportunities to open up for. Baron is a very likely possibility if they want to go for it. We're only 22 minutes in and they're up 12 to 4. Almost 10,000 gold here, Demon. 9 to 3 in turrets. The entire Nine to three. base decimated yes. in 22 minutes. What the hell are we seeing? What have these European teams been doing during the break? Everybody thought they were taking holidays, stepping away. That's what happened during the spring summer. But it seems these guys have eaten their wheat bix this morning. They've come in and ready to play. And this is kind of one thing that I think they got an advantage from with having Reckless on the team early on in terms of a during the summer split. He was there coaching them. He was there watching them scrim, looking at maybe weaknesses, maybe pros, and really helping to make Fnatic adapt. He also had the ability to check out other teams, but right now, Aphromoo getting really low from one spear. Oh, flash from Yellowstar. Yellowstar, who I should point out, was also almost an MVP for Fnatic at the World Finals. Again, another spear from Peke finds the mark. 4-2-2 now. Remember, it was 0 2 0 one point. The chain leech is going to slow Nien down. Gets the stun down on towards him. The spear follows through. Sorry, no, that was a little overkill, I feel. But doesn't matter. They got the kill, nevertheless. Oh, Link, now he's running for his life. He's just going to get bullied and chased out of the base while the rest of the team turn for the Nexus turrets. And it looks like, oh, he's going to stop him from going back. Double doesn't be able to escape. They want the KDA. They're just chasing them down. They don't care about winning. They want double lift. You take smack talk about Fnatic. They want to make sure you pay the price for that one. The spear from Peke will find its mark. It's a 1-4-3 for double lift. Wow, phenomenal Best game. AD down from Peke in chat. That's what he said, ladies and gentlemen. They wanted that kill. They got that kill. And they have proven a point in this game one. 24 minutes and this Nexus will go down. The Intel Extreme Masters Cologne may well have a fight on its hands and it could well be all Europe. Wow, and now they're just taunting them, just dancing. It's so after to die to the turret. Letting the minions finish it off. I mean, this was so personal between these two teams and Fnatic. Wow, I mean, look how happy they are. I mean, even Yellowstar, as Joe was saying earlier, got called shaky by Doublelift, and he didn't look shaky at all. 0 1 and 12 finish for him. And I don't understand what he said. I mean, 0 1 12, like you say. But Yellowstar was tremendous at the World Finals. That Zyra play that he was pulling out, it's exactly what he did at Worlds. He was landing root after root. This is another AD carry. I mean, we talked about that from a Doublelift combo. Yellowstar used to be an AD carry as well, and a damn good one. He was in the Season 1 World Championships as an AD carry. He was in the Season 2 World Championships as an AD carry. He was in the Season 3 World Championships as a support. This guy's got more experience than those two put together. And considering how he started off playing support, as he was playing, uh, you know, obviously with Fnatic when we saw N-Rated leave, 
he looks so iffy at first, but he's done such a great job of embracing the support role and really shining through. I wonder how the relationship's like between him and Reckless because they played so in sync right there. Even though he did die in the beginning, he baited them in far enough to give Reckless a double kill and then from there to just do amazing things. What an incredible game, ladies and gentlemen. 24 minutes. We saw some fast-paced action between Gambit and Cloud9, but right there, that was wow. that was a one-sided decimation. <laughs> and Fnatic proving a point with yet another fantastic lineup. Who would have thought? Karma, top lane, 216, Rabadon's Death Cap, Triple Doran's Drinks, all Spoots. That's all you need. And they had they had money to spend at the end. They didn't care. They just wanted to finish it off. And their whole comp, it wasn't based around doing an insane amount of damage. Obviously, they did. It was just kite, you know, poke, kite back if they engage. Chase them down really easily with a Carmen and an Ash if you need to. And from that, what could CLG do? I mean, their composition did not work. They didn't have a strong engage. It was just vibe, but you needed the flash to even get there. And I also want to talk about tricks because he was taking Elise, take it away from him, had great stats on Elise. Yeah. Vi, he was pretty much punished by I, I, Cyanide's. I don't think it was the champion, though. No. It was just Cyanide taking complete advantage of him in the jungle that, in terms of speed. Having a Shivana, you're very fast. He took away as much as he possibly could constantly against him, taking the big Wraith away, taking Red Buff away. He just controlled him. He didn't allow him to gank at all. And from that, I mean, it just it kind of is... Well, it's a snowball. It's it a really snowball is. indeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, game one is done. Game two is coming up shortly. We're going to go to a break. Do not go anywhere because you do not want to mask the action here in the Intel Extreme.